So, I've been wanting to do a video on tartan DVDs for quite a while now and I'm getting to a certain point in my media collecting that I think it's about time to do it. This is the tartan collection, it's a lot smaller than it was and we'll get into that a little bit later on. So for those of you who don't know, tartan is a film release company that ran from the late 80s to the late 2000s and in my opinion for the time it was the best way to watch foreign films, art house films and just the weirdest most obscure films you could possibly find in HMV, CEX and places like that. So the Tartan label consisted of four sub labels you've got Tartan DVD which is just the blanket term for most of their releases you can tell it with that, that little header um, this you've got your foreign films, your art house films, British, American films this just kind of spanned across most of their output and a lot of them were white and they fit all nice and uniform in this sort of section then the next biggest one that they did was the Asia Extreme which covered Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Thai films and such like that a lot of horror films in this section and I am a big fan of Asian horror so really enjoyed that release then we have Tartan Terror which there was a little bit of overlap some of the Tartan DVD ended up on Tartan Terror oh this one says Tartan DVD at the top not even spotted that before and Tartan Terror on the spine so let's see if we've got a better example no they all do they all say Tartan DVD and then Tartan Terror on the spine who knew who knew and the last of the four subsections probably the smallest one only a handful of releases on this was the Grindhouse section and I only have two films left in this because I've been upgrading and these two will also be getting a Blu-ray upgrade at some point in the future now towards the end of the 2000s Tartan started getting a little bit weird there was a new subsection added which was Tartan Cinema now I only have one film on this and this is Haxon and not a fan not a fan. They also did a few other subsections such as the Bergman collection where they're all individual and the Truffaut collection which I've got the box set for there which had this sort of pink spine um, and in the late 2000s they also partnered with Palisade which is when it all started going downhill in my opinion. Now I've only got a few but around this time they started changing the template on how they look and stuff like that start the spines just don't really fit and P2 I think was their first Palisade release yeah if you see there it's 001 and this is when I started not really being that interested but they didn't do too many under the Palisade tartan label because in the late 2000s around 2008 2009 the company folded so these aren't really in print anymore they're hard to come by nowadays uh, new there's the odd copy of something in uh, HMV I know like of Freaks and Men keeps popping up and The Ballad of Narayama and a few other ones like that keep popping up on DVD in HMV but outside of that the company is defunct so you're going to be finding them all on the used market So my first experience with Tartan was back in 2004-2005 in an English class where a friend of mine lent me Battle Royale on VHS not only was it the first Tartan film I'd ever seen but it was actually the first foreign film with subtitles I'd ever sat down and watched and that kind of just sparked this whole thing where every time I'd be in CEX or HMV I'd be checking out the Tartan section and building up the collection as you can see now and throughout that I managed to find some of my favourite films they've put, put out some really good ones so a few examples are Jodorowsky's films, you know, El Topo, The Holy Mountain, absolutely love those. Uh, Visitor Q, anything Takeshi Miike I am all over, love Visitor Q. And then things like Tetsuo and Battle Royale and um, the Vengeance Trilogy and stuff like that. Harmony Korine's Julian Donkey Boy, big fan of Harmony Korine, love that film. And The Idiots, and if we're talking like extreme films, Irreversible, one of my favourite films like so many fantastic films were released on Tartan 
but as time moves on and technology progresses you start to change your opinions on certain things so about a year, just over a year ago managed to get a 4k tv and i was also lucky enough to get a ps5 on launch so i've got all this 4k equipment now i'm watching these tartan films on standard edition dvd they just weren't quite cutting it and the big turning point for me was when i refused to pick up um, the reanimator on second sight blu-ray nice 2k transfer i decided no because i already had bride of the reanimator on tartan dvd so i thought well i, I collect tartan so let's get reanimator on Tartan DVD and after months of searching really hard to find a copy on Tartan managed to find one spent far too long looking for it spent too much money on it really it was like over a fiver it's not worth over a fiver because when I sit down to watch them I realise that the print for these are atrocious I should be playing you some clips here so you can see just how bad the print for this actually is it is terrible I was so disappointed and it kind of made me realize now that companies like Arrow, Criterion, you know, even Artificial Eye are putting out decent Blu-rays, Eureka, all these Second Sight, Indicator, all these companies are putting out these really nice restorations of art films and foreign films. They're giving them the love that they deserve and they're not as expensive as they used to be. Blu-rays used to be like 30, 40 quid for just a film. Nowadays, a standard edition on Arrow, in the sale, you're looking at about a tenner. And it's like, why not? Why not? So, as of last year and this year, I'm slowly upgrading a lot of the Tartan films to Blu-ray. So that means I'm getting rid of a big chunk. Obviously, there are going to be some that I keep because they've not been re-released in any form but this already minimized collection will be even smaller by the end of the year and it's it's kind of sad but it's what you need to do to maintain a collection really but let's not dwell let's move on to part three but it wasn't just the uh, reanimator issue that made me change my mind on all this. Even though it was a big part of it, there were a few other factors. During lockdown, uh, Indicator put out this absolutely amazing irreversible set. As I said before, one of my favourite films. And this is just an absolutely beautiful set. I had Irreversible, uh, three different editions of it through Tartan. Like the collector's edition, the collector's edition that were missing a sleeve, and just the standard edition. Got rid of all them last year the minute that this came out. And then Arrow announced the 4K Battle Royale set, which, you know, I love Battle Royale. The first foreign film I ever sat and watched. And this 4K set is incredible. I've never seen the first film looking so good. And this even comes with top trumps for all the characters and stuff like that. So I couldn't not, genuinely couldn't not. Then there's the third window, Tetsuo, which I'd been missing for a good few years. I didn't even realize they'd put it out. Cause not been up to date with Third Window. Started collecting a lot of their stuff though, they put out a lot of Katano films and really good. Funky Forest recently is definitely worth checking out. But seeing one of my favourite films of all time, all high def in four, no, in, well, 2K restoration I think it is, just looked amazing. Made me so happy re-watching this. And then, recent purchase was Herschel Gordon Lewis's box set which has got 14 films in it and it makes these few tartan dvd low definition quality crappy versions just seem kind of redundant really when you've got something like this and that's not all you know there's more there is a lot more there's like the vengeance trilogy that arrow have put out there's audition which i don't have a copy of yet but there's a nice blu-ray for that and there's even the bloody Wong Kar Wai Criterion set. Now, when I wrote the script, which is just down there, it said, which it, it said that this was stupidly priced, but I'll probably get it one day when it goes down in price. Well, it didn't go down in price, but here I am holding a copy. It's that good. This is an absolutely beautiful box set. Only seven films for £150, but 
Oh my god, the set alone is worth it. It's so nice. So, you can probably see my thought process as to why a lot of these have got to go, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean that I don't still love Tartan films and the release company. So, I still want to gush over them a little bit. Firstly, they've got great taste for the most part. There's so many films I'd recommend from the collection. But I also just love how they look. The spine's distinctive and it stands out on a shelf. It really looks nice and uniform when you've got a bunch of them. They also stand out in CEX and I get that excited jolt when I see them sitting on a shelf for sale. Then, in every Tartan DVD, you get a poster for a film. Well, it is usually just for 2046. I really like getting feelies in film releases and the brochures really take me back. I used to stare at these as a kid on the bus coming back from town wondering what some of the films could be about. Then there's what's on the disc itself. There's always a handful of special features and trailers for the Tartan releases and the presentation for the time was fantastic. They always seemed to try with the prints and you could tell they had a real passion for what they were putting out. I mean, if you've seen my Vipco or Dead of Night reviews, you know this is a real treat. They also had pretty good subtitles for the most part, with very few typos, which is saying something because recently I spotted a few typos in the Arrow Battle Royale 4K release, third Windows release of Takeshi Kitano's Getting Any, and a documentary I watched on Amazon Prime called Full Sheaf of Fake. I'd definitely say I owe a lot of my film taste to Tartan, so cheers for that. Alright, now it's time for me to show off some of my favourite things in the Tartan collection. Some of the weird releases, some of the really outstanding releases, and just a few bits that I've got lying around. Let's start with one that I've already discussed on here, but worth showing again. The Jodorowsky set. Now this, at the time, was amazing, and Arrow have re-released this recently with an extra documentary, but at the time, this was fantastic. You get Fan, um, Fando and Lease, which was only released in this set, and you got the soundtracks for El Topo and The Holy Mountain. Really good, really got me into Jodorowsky as a kid. Next up, this is a bit of a weird one. This is the One Car Y box set, which has Days of Being Wild, As Tears Go By, and 2046 in it. And it comes in this really weird plastic shell case. And it does, I wish it looked a bit more like a tartan release. On the shelf, this doesn't really fit with any, because it's got this really weird one car Y lettering on the spine. But it's just a cool thing, and I'm going to be getting rid of this as well. So look out for this in Sheffield CEX if you want a copy, because obviously I've got the very expensive <laughs> Criterion version instead. Uh, let's move on to... Um, the Ring Collector's Edition with the lenticular cover, which doesn't really show up on the camera as I can see there. Um, once again, Arrow have released the Blu-ray version of this and I don't own the Ring on Blu-ray. Do want to and I will do at some point, but for the time being I got this and it cost me 50p and it comes with a fourth film by the same director called Sleeping Bride. Now, with the way it's dis the way it's described on the back, the font, the packaging and all that, you'd think it's another horror film, but it's not. It's a fantasy romance drama. So a bit of false advertising, a bit misleading, but the only way to see that film is to get this set because it's not been released elsewhere. So for 50p, it's worth a look. And I like, I like lenticular covers, who don't? Next up we have probably the stupidest thing I own. One of the stupidest things I own. It's huge. It is Top Spot, a Tracy Emin film that is absolutely atrocious. And this is a huge set. Look at how it fits on the shelf. Look. You see? You see the size difference though? Absolutely ridiculous. It's, it's 63 minutes and it's crap and it's huge. It kind of sums up Tracy Emin though really, doesn't it? You can get a standard version of this just in a regular case, because this does come in a regular case on the inside. Look. But it's in all this and you get like a limited edition post postcard art print, which I don't like Tracy, I mean I think she's 
annoying. And this just sums her up quite well, I think, really. Over the top, annoying, and not very good. Um, <laughs> next up, though, something pretty cool is A Taste of Asia Extreme. Now, this is a collection of trailers for the Asia Extreme brand of art of um, Tartan. Nearly said artificial, aren't they? And this also comes with the entirety of Bangkok Dangerous, the feature film from the Pang Brothers, which decent Asian action film. Uh, this has been a real help for uh, getting a taste of some of the films for a buying them and being able to figure out what films there are, what films have been released and which ones I still need to get. Um, yeah, just really cool, really cool little DVD. And speaking of cataloging and figuring out what's in the collection and stuff, um, I used to own uh, the Ring Trilogy in individual cases and with the Ring Zero I got this. Uh, a Guide to Asia Extreme, sponsored by Tiger Beer. I really like Tiger Beer, and I really like Asia Extreme. And this is just a sort of book rundown synopsis of what films they've put out, what they're about, who they're by, what year they are. And again, this has been useful. It's like further reading in the back. Oh wow, there's loads of stuff in this actually. I didn't realise it went quite as... I didn't know they put out a Graveyard of Honour. Ha! Huh, who knew? I'm going to have to have another, look, have another look at this. Upcoming attractions from Asia Extreme, it says. I don't think they put out things like The Park or Recycle. Maybe they did. I'm going to have to look into some of these. Seance? I've never seen that. Samurai Reincarnation? I don't think they ever did that one either. They did do Spider Forest, but that was quite a late one. And Unborn, that's terrible. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Really cool little book, and I kept it when I got rid of Ring Zero, because I wanted the book. Uh, another oddity of mine is my Night of the Living Dead VHS, and I got this from a car boot for about 50p, and it's definitely tartan, but it's of the remake, the 93 Night of the Living Dead remake. I haven't actually watched this. I have a VHS player all set up upstairs, but never seen this, so I don't know if it's any good or not. But it'd be interesting to watch a tartan VHS at some point. I have to give it a look. Not only VHS and DVD though, but we also have a Tartan laser disc. That's right, as you can see there, look. We've got Terence Malick's Badlands, which is completely unopened. Now, I don't really like Terence Malick that much. Tree of Life is one of the worst films I've ever seen. And Badlands was okay. Actually, I quite like Badlands. So I'm glad I've got this one. Um, but not big on Terence Malick generally. I kind of want to see what's inside. This is the director's collection, it says here. I feel like if I open this, it's going to be all smashed up because they're a bit brittle on This is really tightly packed. But yeah, there we go. Another piece of tartan history. A tartan laser disc. I don't know how many of these they actually bothered putting out. This one looks like it's number 47, so more than you'd expect. And finally, the last thing that I want to show off in my collection of tartan things is this massive beast, is the Bergman Collection. Now, I've been working my way through this for the past two and a bit years, I think. No, I don't think it's been that long. Coming up to two years, I think. And I still haven't seen them all. I've got one left, Saraband, I'm at the last one. And this is fantastic. If you're a fan of Bergman or you want to get into Bergman, this is a great way to start. Uh, it doesn't include all the films that Tartan put out of Bergman's. There's no sawdust and tinsel, there's no... Is it The Devil's Eye or something like that? And there's a few others that are missing, unfortunately. Um, I don't know why they didn't release them, but sawdust and tinsel, Criterion have put out, so I've already got a copy of that floating around. And Criterion have put out a comprehensive Bergman collection, which I think is US only, but it might be region free. But it's also like 250 quid. So this is a decent alternative and a cheaper way and the prints are fantastic on these, they look really good and the subtitles are great and I've absolutely, I've absolutely been loving watching these through for the past few years um, so yeah, those are some of my favourite things that Tartan have put out that I've got in my collection but you can't have good without having bad, can you? so let's take a look at those So what are some of the worst things that Tartan have put out then? Not too many, to be honest. Um, 
I've got a selection of them here, let's have a look. Secretary with Maggie Gyllenhaal. This, I just, I hate this film. I, I hate this film. It's not funny, it's not cute, it's just really obnoxious and annoying. And, I mean, it's a bit of a precursor for Fifty Shades of Grey, really. It's got that similar sort of plot line to it. It's just not great. I can't believe Tartan bothered putting it out, to be honest. Now, I was really excited for this one. You know, big Twin Peaks fan. Love Big Ed, Everett McGill. Blonde, big fan of Blonde. What about a film with both of them in together? Union City. No, this is a massive piece of shit, this. An unqualified masterpiece. Should have just put unqualified. This is a dreadful, dreadful film. Such a weird film. Nobody can act. Everyone's all stilted and the plot goes nowhere. Not worth your time. Don't bother with it. Uh, I wasn't too big on the Red Squirrel. Uh, Spanish film. And I don't know. Just didn't really do it for me. Do like a lot of Spanish films, you know. Uh, Jamon Jamon. Um, Age of Lulu's good. Uh, you know, there's a few. Tessis, fantastic film, Tessis. This one there, just didn't quite cut it for me. I don't even know what the hell this is, Rolling With The Nines. I mean, I've watched it, it's got Dizzy Rascal in it. I don't even remember that. That's how rubbish this is. Don't even remember it. I think it's just a crap gangster action film. Princess, now this you can still buy in HMV. Um, there was a lot of 300 going on eBay for like, like, I can't remember, a couple hundred quid or something, 300 copies of Princess. It's just this really, I think it's really short. I don't know, it's 90 minutes. It's like a part animated, part storyboard story about poverty or something. I don't know. I just remember finding it really, really boring and really badly animated as well. Don't bother with that one. Oh, and finally, basketball or basketball. Um. I got about 20 minutes into this and turned it off, it's a, I mean, maybe I just wasn't in the mood, but what is it, it's a documentary about a place called Basque, oh, I don't know, I just got really bored, really boring, very like political and geography based, and I just, it reminded me of Bergman's Faro document 79, if you've seen that. Just sort of like, I don't really care, I'm bored. Uh, maybe I should give it another go though. I picked it up for like a quid in like a charity shop or something. Basque skin against stone, it says on the DVD. I don't know. So, there's some bad. There is some bad from Tartan, but I still feel like I've gained a lot from watching these films. Bad films aren't necessarily the worst thing in the world. Sometimes you need to watch something crap to appreciate something good. Especially if you make things as well. Sometimes it's nice to see what not to do. So, I am very glad that I've seen all those films. Even if they're not the best films in the world. So, we've looked at the good, we've looked at the bad. Let's take a look at some exclusives that I will be keeping in the collection until they're re-released one day. So a fantastic reason why Tartan is in some way still relevant is that these are the only company who have ever actually put out some of these amazing films. So a few exclusive Tartan releases that, as of yet, haven't been re-released include uh, Trouble Every Day, I'm a huge Vincent Gallo fan, and uh, Claire Denise, she's, she's alright. Uh, this is probably her best film though, just a really weird, slow, um, cannibal film, fantastic film, needs a re-release. I could see someone like Indicator or Second Sight, maybe Arrow releasing this. Get on it, it's a great film, great film. And it's quite pricey I think still on the Tartan DVD. Man Bites Dog, I'm really surprised that this is a classic, this is a classic found footage horror film in a way. It's brutal, it's grim, the print on this is Fucking awful. Um, get re-releasing it. Apparently, I spent a fiver on this. Um, I was served by Jonathan B. Cheers, Jonathan B. I'm Jonathan P. I guess. Um, yeah, this is a great film. It's dark. It's gritty, and it needs a re-release. Maybe BFI could get on that one. I see BFI doing that. Criterion. Get again. Criterion release for that. It's an amazing film. 
Visit a Cube, already mentioned it. One of my favourite Takeshi Miike films, one of the weirdest sets I've ever had. I watched this at a friend's house, we both just sat in silence for 90 minutes, just staring at the screen, wondering what the hell we were watching. It's incredible, it is incredible. Arrow, you've already put out the Dead Alive trilogy, you've already put out Audition, you've already put out, was it Black Society trilogy, you know? Get Happiness of the Katakuris you've done, get on this one, get this one in your Takeshi, uh, Takeshi Miike collection. It's a great film and it deserves an upgrade, even if it is mental. Taxidermia, maybe this one doesn't need an upgrade, this is one of the most disgusting films I have ever seen. But you can only get the Tartan DVD. Um, I mean, it's an amazing film and it needs to be preserved. And a special edition would not go amiss, but I don't think I want to see this in 4K. Ugh. God damn, it's disgusting. Well worth a watch if you like your stomach churning and you like feeling ill. The Ordeal. Now, this one definitely needs a re-release. This is the... Um, this is the cinematographer for uh, Harmony Kareen and Gaspar Noé, who did the cinematography for this horror film. It's just a quiet little, I think it's French, quiet little French horror film, but there's a shot in it that I can't get out of my head where the camera goes through a car window without breaking, it just goes through it and we're just in a car. Really, really clever and just a decent little horror film. It'd be great to see this uh, re-released, Second Sight, you know, you did, I think they did Lake Mungo recently. Something like this wouldn't be a miss in your uh, catalogue. Definitely needs a re-release. Fantastic horror film. And finally, Julian Donkey Boy. Now I'm going to harp on about this as often as I possibly can. I always say this. We need more love for Harmony Korean films in England. I have Gummo, which is an American release because we don't get Gummo in this country. So I had to, I had to import it. Only one of his films has got a Blu-ray release, and it's Spring Breakers, and it's because A24 did it. Beach Bomb that came out a few years ago, fantastic film, and we only got the DVD in England. Get on it. Somebody. Somebody. Just do a box set, you know? You could include kids in it as well. Kids, Gummo, Julian Donkey Boy, Mr. Lonely, Trash Humpers. Get on it. It needs a re-release. Especially, especially needs a re-release. So these are the ones that I'm going to be keeping for the foreseeable future, and there are a few more that have only been released through Tartan. So my purchasing of Tartan won't stop anytime soon. It's just slowing down dramatically, and I will be getting rid of a lot. Let's sum up, shall we? I think I've been waffling on for far too long. So, as good as Tartan were in their time, unfortunately, they've been overshadowed in these past few years by bigger and better companies. Arrow, Criterion, Artificial Eye even have kept it going, they've been bought out by Curzon, so they've got the backing for it. Second Sight, Indicator, so many, Eureka, they're a good one. Um, with all these 2K, 4K restorations, all these special editions, fantastic editions, and unfortunately Tartan just doesn't seem like a viable option anymore. I, I love Tartan, but I love film too much to not do them the disservice of just watching them on a crappy DVD that's not the best print in the world. And no, I'm not gonna replace the DVDs with Blu-rays and keep the Tartan DVDs, because that's what's known as hoarding. So I think that that sums it up quite well really. This Tartan collection which I've had for many many years, it was a lot bigger, I've already said that I think. I'm going to try and find pictures and put them in if I can't then. Oh uh, well. Um, but I think I've got some pictures lying around somewhere of what it used to be. So this is going to get smaller, the Blu-rays are going to get bigger and I can finally get rid of some of these films now. So if you're interested in this, that's great. I don't know many people who are that interested in Tartan specifically. I have a big affinity for them, I grew up with them, they were my go-to, you know. So it's been nice to share some thoughts, some anecdotes and some releases with you. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, this has been a little aside, I'll be back to the regular stuff very soon, and cheers!